Hey, boys and girls, this is Uncle Chad. It's snowing outside. It was 101 on Saturday. Uh, it is 32 degrees and dropping. You're expecting it to get like 28-ish. It's a little surreal to have it be snowing in, in summertime. I mean, it's September. We're pa a little past Labor Day, but it's still pretty much summer. It's it's kind of crazy. So at least it'll put out the, the, the fires, you know. Corey, we've had some issues with uh, weather anomalies, haven't we, this year with the derecho in Iowa and all these storms and everything in uh, in Colorado? Yeah, it's been a pretty hair-raising year, that's for sure. Yeah, that's right. Um, what do you think? Should we just get back to get right back into Hatchet? You, you got anything you want to talk about while you're here or while we're here? No, I think we should just probably keep going. We've had a lot of people say that they're ready for the next chapter and it's time to move on, Chad. All right. That sounds awesome. So, um, here we are. Chapter 7. And the uh, name of this chapter, if you can see it, is Mother. Mother. Tell your children not to not obey. That's what I was thinking when I hear that and Julia, you know, she's a mother. So, okay, let's, uh, are we ready to do this? Are we ready to, are we ready to go? Yeah, we ready to do this? All right, okay, yeah, yeah. There's the old type All right, let's see, so this is, uh, Lily Ophelia, Taro, of course, and Elena, my daughter in North Carolina, um, miss you terribly. It's getting a little bit old, but uh, you're being a trooper, staying in there, so we carry on. Let's get through this book, okay? So, what do you think about that, Corey? Does that make sense to really try and prod Elena to carry on, carry through? Yeah, she's pretty strong for staying there as long as she has, and any longer is just basically a bonus at this point, Chad. No, okay. That, I agree with that. I think that sounds... It sounds like a really, really good... That's a sound bit of advice, so... Um, let's see here. So, as we start, page 63 in Continuing Hatchet. All right. Mother! He screamed it, and he could not be sure if he screamed awake, if the scream awakened him or the pain in his stomach. His whole abdomen was torn with great rolling jolts of pain, pain that doubled him in the darkness of the little shelter put him over and face down in the sand to moan again and again. Mother, 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 he's saying. Never anything like this. Never. It was as if all the berries and all the pits had exploded in the center of him. Uh, ripped and tore at him. He crawled out the doorway and was sick in the sand. He then crawled still farther and was sick again, vomiting and with terrible diarrhea. For over an hour, and, uh, geez, for over, for over a year, he thought, until he was at last empty and drained of all strength. Then he crawled back into the shelter and fell again into the sand, but could not fall asleep at first. Could do nothing except lie there, and his mind decided then to bring the memory up again. In the mall, every detail, his mother sitting at the station wagon with the man. And she had leaned across and kissed, mm. kissed mm. the man with the short blonde hair. And it was not a friendly peck, but a kiss. Mm. A kiss mm. where she turned her head over at an angle and put her mouth against the mouth of the blonde man. <laughs> Who was not his father and kissed mouth to mouth and then brought her hand up to touch his cheek. Watch it. And forehead. Whoa! Uh, th while they were kissing and Brian saw it. <laughs> Nothing like seeing your mom making out with another guy, right? Um, saw this thing that his his mother did with the blonde man. Saw the kiss that became the secret that his father still did not know about. Know it all. Interesting about it all. The memory was so real that he could feel the heat in the mall that day. Could remember the worry that Terry would turn and see 
would turn and see his mother, could remember the worry of the shame of it, and then the memory faded and he slept again, awake. For a second, perhaps two, he did not know where he was, still sleeping in his sleep somewhere. Then he saw the sun streaming in the open doorway of the shelter and heard, Beep! You're back doing this, Corey, on the page turns, page 64 to 65. Yep, 64 to 65. Keep it rocking and rolling, Chad. All right. You caught me in the middle of a sentence, so I'm going to read the sentence again, and please don't beep this time, okay? Because it's, it's actually a little rude, Corey. It's a little bit. A little, oh, sorry. I didn't realize I just thought I was helping. It, it, it's cool. It's cool. I, I appreciate your help, Corey. I really, really do. But here we go. So please don't interrupt me. We're just going to listen, okay? Okay, Chad. Then he saw the sun streaming in the open doorway of the shelter and heard the close, vicious whine of the mosquitoes and knew. He brushed his face completely, welted now, with two days of bites completely covered with lumps and bites and was surprised to find the swelling on his forehead had gone down a great deal, was almost gone. The smell was awful and he couldn't place it. <laughs> Then he saw the pile of berries at the back of the shelter and remembered the night and being sick. Too many of them, he said aloud. Too many gut cherries. <sighs> he crawled out of the shelter and found where he'd messed the sand. He used sticks and cleaned, at, cleaned it as best as he could, covered it with clean sand and went down to wash his hands and get a drink. It was... Still very early, only just past true dawn, and the water was so calm he could see his reflection. It frightened him. The face, the face was cut and bleeding, swollen and lumpy. The hair all matted on and on his forehead and cut, and on his forehead a cut had healed, but left the hair stuck with blood and a scab. His eyes were slits in the bites and he was somehow covered with dirt he slapped the water with his hand to destroy the mirror ugly he thought very very ugly and he was at that moment very overcome with self-pity he was dirty and starving and bitten and hurt and lonely and ugly and afraid and so completely miserable that it was like being a pit a dark deep pit with no way out Beep! 65 to 66. Keep on chucking, Chad. All right, Corey. Uh, Corey, I'm going to give you a... Corey, Corey. That's right. Corey, 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 Corey. Thank you, Corey. Oh, that kind of scares me, Chad. I, I don't mean to scare you, Corey. I just like to use the microphone sometimes because it makes me feel powerful. Well, it kind of scares me a little bit because it distorts your voice, you know? Yeah, yeah, I know. I know you don't like that. <laughs> uh, let's see here. He sat back on the bank and fought crying. Then, then let it come and cried for perhaps three, four... Minutes, long tears, self-pity tears, wasted tears. Uh, he stood, went back to the water, and took small drinks as soon as he, uh, as soon as the cold water hit his stomach. He felt the hunger sharpen as it had before, and he stood and held his abdomen until the hunger cramps receded. He had to eat. He was weak with it again, down with the hunger, and he had to eat. Back at the shelter, the berries lay in a pile where he had dumped them when he grabbed his windbreaker. Gut cherries, he called them in his mind now, and he thought of eating some of them. Not such a crazy amount as he had, which he felt brought on the sickness in the night, but just enough to stave off the hunger a bit. He crawled into the shelter. Some flies were on the berries, and he brushed them off. Oh, it's gross. He selected... Only the berries that were solidly ripe, not the not the light red ones, that's smart. But the berries that were dark, maroon red and black, and swollen with ripeness. 
When he had a small handful of them, he went back down to the lake and washed them in the water. Small fish scattered away as he splashed the water up, and he wished he had a fishing line and hook. Then he ate them carefully, spitting out the pits. They were still tart, but had a sweetness to them, although they seemed to make his lips... His lips a bit numb. Beep! 66 to 67, Chad. When he finished, he was still hungry. But the edge was gone and his legs didn't feel as weak as they had. He went back to the shelter. It took him half an hour to go through the rest of the berries and sort them, putting all the full ripe ones in a pile on some leaves, the rest in another pile. When he was done, he covered the two piles with grass. He tore from the lake shore to keep the flies off and went back outside. They were awful berries. Those gut cherries, he thought. But... There was food there, some kind, and he could eat a bit more later tonight if he had to. For now, he had a full day ahead of him, a full day ahead of him. He looked at the sky through the trees and saw that while there were clouds, they were scattered and did not seem to hold rain. There was a light breeze that seemed to keep the mosquitoes down, and he thought, looking up along the lake shore, if there was one kind of berry, there should be other kinds, sweeter kinds. If he kept the lake in sight, as he had done yesterday, he should be all right. Should be able to find home again, and it, and it stopped him. He had actually thought it at that time. Home. Three days. No, two. Or was it three? Yes, this was the third day, and he had thought of the shelter as home. He turned and looked, and turned and looked at it, studied the crude work, uh... Uh, the brush made a fair wall, not weathering, but it cut. Beep! 67 to 68, Chad. It's getting a little old. All right, I'm trying to be patient. But those beeps are a little long. And I feel like you're maybe um, taking advantage of the situation to try and interject yourself into the book reading. Really? Yeah. I'm just trying to help, man. I appreciate it, but sometimes it's a little like... Sorry, Corey, I'm just being honest. Maybe I'm just a little frustrated by all the snow and weather outside. It's not corn growing weather. Well, that's the truth. We'll just leave it at that, all right? Get back into this. I'm going to read that sentence. And you're not going to beep, my friend. Okay? You're not going to beep. Not, not like that. When you beep, just go, beep. Is that cool? Can you try that? Beep. Oh, shit. It's still a little long. Ready? Beep. Everybody do it with me. Can we say it? Everybody show Corey how to do it. Beep. Can you try that? Ready? Everybody count down with me. We're going to count down. Corey, ready? Corey, 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 you can do it, dude. You can do it. Ding, ding, ding. You can do it. You can do it. Come on, Corey. Everybody, count me down. We're gonna do this. We're gonna get Corey to do a, do a good beep. Ready? We do uh, on on one at the time. We're gonna go beep. Right? Here we go. Beep. Okay, Corey. Here we go. Here's your chance. Ready? Three, two, one. Beep. I think we're making progress. I think we're making progress. All right, here we go. So I'm going to read halfway through the sentence. We get to that point. You can give me a little beep, right? And we'll move on and we'll all be, we'll all be, we'll be back to normal. Okay. No more indulgence with the beep, Corey. All right. I feel like maybe you're making fun of me a little bit, Chad. No, maybe I'm hazing you a hair. I'm just trying to take care of my buddy. You know, I just, I don't want to ruin our relationship. I, li I like where we're at. So anyway, we're getting off track. We're getting off track, everybody. It's easy to talk to Corey. All right, here we go. Ready? The brush made a fair wall, not weather tight, but it cut beep. Very good professional. But it cut most of the wind off. He hadn't done so badly at all. Maybe it wasn't much. 
but also maybe it was all he had for a home. Do you mind reading a little bit faster, Chad? I thought we had talked about this. I thought I told you that I, it's really hard for me to read out loud, and I'm trying. But I get going, and I, I, I just, I get, I get, I get stumbled. I, I have too many things in my head. I gotta just, okay. See, when I do this, I go to 68, got 69. Uh, 70 and 70, 73. <laughs> That's just four and a half pages to go. So, all right, I'm going to hunker down and I'm going to, I'm going to really concentrate and try and get through this. Okay, Corey. All right. Sounds good. Just think of it as like reading practice, Chad. Okay. Do you want to read a little bit? Well, I suppose I could read a little bit if you wanted me to. I mean, you want to just take off right there at that, at that? Point right there, all right, he thought. Is that, is that where you want to start? Yeah, I'll read a little bit. Okay. All right, he thought, so I'll call it home. He turned back and set off up the side of the lake, heading for the gut cherry bushes, his windbreaker bag in his hand. Things were bad, he thought, but maybe not that bad. Maybe he could find some better berries. When he came to the gut cherry bushes, he paused. The branches were empty of birds. Oh, Corey, wait a minute. Wait, wait, sorry. I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I'm the sound guy. I'm the sound guy. Well, you got in the middle of my reading, Chad. I was right in the middle of reading, just like you asked me to, and then you had to go for the crow. You're right, Corey. You got me that time. I need to do, I need to do a better job. All right, you want me to take back over? Yeah, you read the book. It's your book, not my book. I think I proved my point. Very good. Very good. I agree. I think you did too. That was pretty good reading. Everybody thinks that was pretty good? All right. We're going to keep going. <sighs> Jeez. Okay. We're going to turn that hat around. Let's get a little old. All right. Let's get to it. Uh, maybe he could find some better berries. When he came to the gut cherry bushes, he paused. The branches were empty of birds, but still had many berries, and some of those had been merely... Uh, red yesterday and were now dark maroon to black, much riper. Maybe he should stay and pick them and save them. But the, explos but the explosion in the night was still m much in his in memory and he decided to go on. Gut cherries were food, but tricky to eat. He needed something better. Another hundred yards up the shore, there was a place where the wind had torn another path. These may, uh, these... These must have been fierce winds, he thought, to tear up places like this as they had the path he had found with the plane when he crashed. Here the trees were not all the way down, but twisted and snapped off halfway up from the ground, so their tops were all down and rotted and gone, leaving the snags poking into the sky like broken teeth. It made for tons of dead and dry wood, and he wished once more he... Beep! Thank you, Corey could get a fire going. It also made a kind of clearing with the tops of the trees gone. The sun could get down to the ground and it was filled with small thorny bushes that were covered with berries. Raspberries! All right, raspberries! woo -wee. We like those. These he knew because there were some raspberry bushes in the park and he and Terry were always picking and eating them when they biked past. The berries were full and ripe and he tasted one to find it sweet and with none of the problem of the gut cherries. Although he, they did not grow in clusters, there were many of them and they were easy to pick and Brian smiled and started eating. Sweet juice, he thought. Oh, they were sweet with just a tiny tang and he picked and ate and picked and ate and thought he had never tasted anything so good. Soon as before, his stomach was full, but now he had some sense and he did not gorge or cram more down. Instead, he picked more and put them in his windbreaker, feeling the morning sun in his back and thinking he was rich, rich with food now, just rich. And he heard a noise to his rear, a slight noise, and he turned and saw the bear. Oh, Corey, the bear. Jeez, you're getting off kilter there a little bit, Cor. Cora, getting off, getting excited about the bear, huh? Yeah, I've never seen a bear, man. Yeah, I have. I saw one, we saw uh, one and its cubs this summer at Cattail. Really is that? We're running right across the road at dusk. We were on the 
we were on the uh, ATV and we were out running around. Wow, that sounds pretty exciting. Yeah, it was it was exciting, all right. A little little intimidating. They're pretty fast. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, um, let's see here. He could do nothing. Think nothing. His tongue stained with berry juice stuck to the roof of his mouth, and he stared at the bear. It was black with a cinnamon-colored noise, not twenty feet from him, and big, no, huge. It was all all black fur and huge. He had seen one in the zoo in the city once, a black bear, but it had been beep. What's that all about? That wasn't. There was no beep. I already turned the page. Oh, I forgot. You're not supposed to do it, man. I already turned the page. It's already cats out of the bag. It's not a secret anymore. You're not telling me to help to turn. I know I got to turn the page, dude. Man, it's warm in here, Corey. That was a little unnecessary, man. Sorry, Chad. It's okay. <sighs> black bear it had been from india or somewhere this one was wild and much bigger than the one in the zoo and it was right there right there the sun caught the ends of the hairs along the back shining black and silky the bear stood on its hind legs half up and studied brian just studied him and then lowered itself and moved slowly to the left eating berries as it rolled along waffling and delicately using its mouth to lift each berry from the stem and in seconds it was gone gone and brian still had not moved his tongue was stuck to the top of his mouth the tip <coughs> oh wow jiminy christmas chad you sneezed all over me what are you spreading the covid now no i am not spreading covid Corey. i just sneezed i'm sorry i'm sitting right here with a sneeze in my arm i got a book in this hand that I, I'm sorry. It's a good thing that you and I aren't the same, because if we were, I'd be sick tomorrow, that's for sure. Well, I'm sorry, Corey. Jeez, we have a little tension in here tonight, don't we? Wow. Okay. Um, sorry, man. Um, gone. And Brian was still, had still not moved. His tongue was stuck to the top of his mouth and tip half out. His eyes were wide and his hands were reaching for a berry. Then he made a low sound, a low, mm. it made no sense. It was just a sound of fear of disbelief that something that large could have come so close to him without his knowing. It just walked up to him and could have eaten him and he could have done nothing, nothing. And when the sound was half done, a thing happened to his legs, a thing he had nothing to do with. And they were running in the opposite direction of the bear back toward the shelter. He would have run all the way in panic, but he had gone perhaps 50 yards. His brain took over and slowed and finally stopped him. Beep! Page 70 to 71, Chad. Okay. Thank you, Corey. If the bear had wanted you, his brain said... He would have taken you. It's something to understand, he thought, not something to run away from. The bear was eating berries, not people. The bear made no move to hurt you, to threaten you. It stood to see you better study you, and then went on its way, eating berries. It was a big bear, but it did not want you, did not want to cause you harm, and that is the thing to understand here. He turned and looked back at the stand of berries, uh, at the stand of raspberries. The bear was gone. The birds were singing. He saw nothing that could hurt him. There was no danger here that he could sense, uh, he could feel. In the city, at night, there was sometimes danger. Uh... Sorry, I'm a little slow on the draw. Yeah, you're not doing a very good job, Chad. A little tense, are we, Corey? Well, you're all over me about this whole beep thing. I, I just, we'll take it up another time. Maybe next time we rehatch it. Maybe I won't try and be so sensitive about it. Okay. I have, I understand you have a different experience and I'm trying to understand where you're coming from. Right. It's, it's fair. Everybody's got their own perspective and we need to respect everybody's perspective. Right, Corey? 
Yep, I agree. Okay, good. I'm glad. Are you just saying that to just glaze it over? Just read, man. Okay, all right. Sorry, everybody. This is a lot of talking to Corey. It's, I mean, that's why you're here is for us to talk. So, yeah, that's true. Okay. Um, let's see here. So good. So sweet and rich. And his body was so empty. And the bear had almost indicated that it didn't mind sharing. Just had just walked from him. And the berries were so good. And he thought finally if he did not go back and get the berries, he would have to eat the gut cherries again tonight. That convinced him, and he walked slowly back to the beef. 70 to 72, 71 to 72, Chad. All right. We're almost done with this check, buddy. Just keep reading. All right. Okay. I got this, Corey. I got this. Uh, back to the raspberry patch and continued picking for the entire morning, although with great caution and once when a squirrel rustled some pine needles at the base of a tree and nearly jumped and nearly jumped out of his skin about <laughs> about noon the sun about noon the sun was almost straight overhead the clouds began to thicken and look dark and in moments it started to rain and he took what he had picked and trotted back to the shelter he had eaten probably two pounds of raspberries and maybe another three pounds in his jacket rolled in a pouch. He made it to the shelter just as the clouds completely opened and the rain roared down in sheets. Soon the sand outside was drenched and there were rivulets, that's a new word I've never read before, running down to the lake. But inside he was dry and snug. He started to pick the, uh, put the picked berries back in a sorted pile with the gut cherries but noticed that the raspberries were seeping through the jacket. They were much softer than the gut cherries and apparently were being crushed a bit with their own weight. When he held up the jacket and looked beneath it, he saw a stream of red liquid. He put a finger in it and found it to be sweet and tangy, like pop without a fizz. And he grinned and lay back on the sand, holding up the bag over his face and letting the seepage drip inside his mouth. Outside, the rain poured down, but Brian lay back, drinking syrup from the berries, dry and with the pain. Thank you, Corey. With the pain almost gone, the stiffness also gone, his belly full and good taste in his mouth. For the first time since the crash, he was not thinking for himself or his own life. Brian was wondering if the bear was as surprised as he to find another being in the berries. Later in the afternoon, as evening, as evening came down, he went to the lake and washed the sticky berry juice from his face and hands and then went to, back to prepare for the night. While he had accepted and understood that the bear did not want to hurt him, he was still much in his thoughts, and as darkness came into the shelter, he took the, th the hatchet out of his belt and put it by his head with hand on the handle as, he, as the day caught up with him and he slept. Beep. Next chapter, Chad. Thank you, Corey. Appreciate it, buddy. Oh, I like making up with you, Chad. Yeah, I'm good at making up with most people. But sometimes you can't, so anyway. Chapter 8, Hatchet. Next week, Lily, Ophelia, Taro, and especially Elena Grace. I love you. Miss you. Hope you guys are doing all right. Have a good one.